Welcome to this quick start video for the Controlmaster range of process controllers. This video shows a CM30 as an example. However, the setup process is similar across the entire Controlmaster range. As standard, every controller comes with the following accessories. Commissioning instructions, panel clamps, bezel release tool, a cold junction sensor required for thermocouple inputs, and a product registration card. The Controlmaster CM30 is designed for panel mounting. Please refer to the commissioning instructions for panel cutout and minimum spacing requirements. First position the upper panel clamp and loosely tighten the panel clamp anchor screw until the panel clamp is lightly touching the panel. Now do the same for the lower panel clamp. Once both panel clamps are in place, tighten both panel clamp anchor screws. In this video, we are using the CM30 to control the temperature of a product heated by a heat exchanger. The product temperature is measured using an RTD and is the input to the controller. And the controller's output is a 4 to 20 milliamp signal controlling a steam valve. Now it's time to wire the input and output signals. To access the terminals, remove the terminal cover by pressing the release catch and pulling it away. Connect the RTD input and the 4 to 20 milliamp output by following the terminal connection diagram. To simplify the connection process, the connection diagram is printed on the terminal cover. Once the input and output wiring is complete, make the power connections to the controller. Cross-check with the serial number label to see whether you have a DC or AC powered unit and make the power connections accordingly. Now that you have completed all the electrical connections, it's time to power up the controller and configure its inputs, outputs and control functionality. In this example, we have a single temperature control loop controlling the temperature of a product. First, go to the initial setup menu and choose the appropriate application template, in this instance, single loop, and then the output type required for the application, in this case, analog. Next, go to the input output configuration menu and set the input type, range, engineering units and a safe broken sensor direction. Finally, go to the control menu, set the control type as PID and ensure the correct control action is configured. Then enter some appropriate PID values. The control masters are shipped with default PID values and these must be changed to suit the dynamics of your process. This can either be done manually or by using the integrated auto-tune functionality. If the controller is to be tuned manually, the instruction manual provides some suggested initial PID values for different process types. The setup of your controller is now complete. To learn more about our Control Master range of controllers and for more hints and tips videos, please visit www.abb.com forward slash recorders.